Allah is challenging. Don't they think amongst themselves? Don't they think to themselves? مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Allah did not create all that is around us except for a wisdom, for a reason, for truth. And all of it will come to an end on the Day of Judgment. Don't they think that Allah created us? That He will resurrect us again? So the challenge here, and in many other verses, we're not going to obviously list all 80 verses in this 30-minute talk, but many other verses challenging a select group of people those who reject Tawheed to come to the conclusion through their intellect that Allah is one and only He is worthy of worship. Likewise, in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 67, the Prophet Ibrahim salam challenges his people. Challenges his people. His people were idol worshippers. And the Prophet Ibrahim challenges them, لَكُمْ وَلِمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Woe to you! You are fools for worshipping these idols. Don't you think? Don't you think you are prostrating to something made of rocks and stone? Something you have carved out with your own hands? You go to the house of an idol worshipper, you find one corner of that house is a sacred location where there is an idol where every morning, every evening, every afternoon they bow them down to and they present offerings to and they give candles to. Ibrahim salam is telling his people, are you fools? Don't you think and ponder that you are going to be subservient to an, an object that cannot think or speak or act? And so the challenge here is to use our minds to come to the conclusion that Allah is our creator and He's created us for a purpose. This is the first series of verses and under this come many verses. The second reason and the second premise, the second set of verses in which we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging mankind to think, is that He is asking mankind to come to the conclusion, the logical, the intellectual conclusion, that this man, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a prophet of God. It is not blind faith for the one who does not believe. There must be a logical, intellectual challenge. Let me see, let me think, is this man a prophet of God or not? And you think, you who does not believe, O non-Muslim, you think and you ponder, you reflect and you contemplate, is this man a prophet of God or not? And under this you know, concept come many verses in the Quran. Again, we'll only quote one or two of them. Surah Al-A'raf, verse 184. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَتَفَكَّرُوا Don't they think? مَا بِصَاحِبِهِمْ مِنْ جِنَّةِ Their companion, i.e. the Prophet ﷺ, is not a madman. Why do you think he's doing what he's doing? Why do you think he has sacrificed everything, put everything on the line for what? Either he's crazy or he has a valid message. And so they're asked to think and to contemplate, to come to the logical and intellectual conclusion that this man is indeed a prophet of God. And in fact, in one of the most powerful verses in the Quran concerning thinking. Allah says in Surah As-Saba verse 46 Surah As-Saba verse 46 قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَعِذُكُمْ Tell them, O Muhammad وسلم, I'm only asking you to do one thing. And by the way, whenever there's a command to the Prophet to spread the message, this command now applies to us. It applies to us now. We are the ones, the heirs and the inheritors of the Prophet We have to stand up and take on that message. So therefore, when we stand up in front of those who do not believe in our religion, we should say exactly what Allah is telling us to say. I ask you but one thing. That you stand up for the sake of God. You stand up for the sake of Allah. In other words, you be active for the sake of Allah. ثُمَّ تَتَفَكَّرُوا And then you think. You think and you contemplate. Fikr. Fakkara means to think. What are you expected to think about? Ma bi sahibikum min jinnah. Once again, the same phrase as in the previous verse. This companion of yours is not a fool or a madman. He is a real prophet of God. So the challenge is there to those who reject the message of Islam. Those who reject the sunnah. Allah tells them clearly. Stand up for the sake of God. Stand up for the sake of Allah. And then think. But think about what? What is the purpose? What do you think about? You think about this man and his message. You think about his seerah and his biography. 
You think about his life and his trials and tribulations. You think about his, mer his miracles and you come to the logical, the intellectual conclusion that this man is indeed a prophet of God. And Ibn Hazm, one of the famous scholars, in fact, the probably the most famous scholar of, of, of Spain, of Muslim Andalus. Ibn Hazm has a beautiful statement. I loved it when I read this statement. He said, if the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had but one miracle, that of his life, his seerah, it would be sufficient for mankind to know he's a prophet of God. No other miracle was needed except for his own lifestyle. His seerah is one of the greatest miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So this is what Allah is telling us in this verse. Stand up and think about this man's message, this man's life, his biography, and you will come to the logical and intellectual and rational conclusion that this man is indeed a prophet of God. And other verses as well, I direct you to Surah Yunus, verse 16. And other verses, again, as I said, there are dozens of verses under each um, you know, one of these categories. The third category of verses that command a certain group of people to think. This command to think occurs for Muslims. For Muslims. What does Allah tell us to think about? He says, as in one example, Surah Ali Imran, verse 191. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, describing the believers that they pray and they fast and they believe and they do this and that, of the characteristics, They are those who think, who remember Allah, who do dhikr when they are standing and sitting and lying down. 24-7 they remember Allah. And they think. They think. The Muslim is not an idiot. He is not a fool. He is not a madman. Allah wants him to think, but about what? وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ About the creation of the heavens and earth. Science, nature, the disciplines that we study in university. You think and you ponder. You research and you contemplate. This is a part of our iman, which unfortunately many of us do not really understand and think about. It is a part of our iman to study what we call the secular sciences. Biology, chemistry, physics, astronomy. It is a part of our iman. Allah tells us. They think about the creation of the heavens and earth. But what happens when you think about this? What is the purpose of this thinking? Oh Allah, you have not done all of this in vain. The beauty, the perfection of biology, of chemistry, of organic chemistry, of the human immunology, every single facet of secular knowledge that we study. Wallahi, our iman should soar to the skies. The perfection of Allah's creation is astounding to the mind. Any single topic that we study, the harmony of everything around us, the interlocking of every single bit, minuscule particle of nature around us, this perfection of, of Allah's creation, it increases our iman. Our iman soars up and so we submit to Allah. We increase our khushu and taqwa and we 